So we can estimate uh, the, the changes in the reservoir, and it's kind of critical that we stress the word changes um, because this is not actually a good way to um, estimate what the stresses actually are because there's a lot of assumptions inherent in this. And, and this equation should look familiar. Um, <laughs> if my fraction lines would show up. Okay. The equation should look familiar because you derived it in homework three. You may not have put it in your final form in exactly that way. I know in the solution I didn't. But if you, uh, if you look at the solution that I posted and, and you just multiply it out, uh, you, you get exactly what's here. And so if you did it correctly, you derived this equation. So if you remember, there was a lot of assumptions inherent in that. And uh, the assumptions were that there basically is no horizontal strain. right? So there's no horizontal strain. And then, of course, the stresses are isotropic elastic. Right? And so in a real reservoir, as you get depletion, you could get into a zone of any elasticity a zone, but a rather a, an, uh, an area on the stress strain curve where you're actually not elastic anymore. And in those cases, um, this will not be uh, you know, a very good estimation. But as a, as a first order estimation, we can use this equation. And the way we do that would be then we, we're going to take the derivative of both sides uh, with respect to pore pressure. Right? And so if we do that, if you were to just take the derivative of the right-hand side uh, with respect to pore pressure, you would get something like uh, minus, this is really difficult. I'm just going to write it on the board, I guess. You would get actually uh, 2 mu minus 1. So if you just took the right-hand side of the equation on the top and took the derivative with respect to pore pressure, and you can see that by inspection. If, if you simplified, you would get this. Um, but the key here is during production. So during production, any change in pore pressure is always going to be negative. Right? So we, the, pore, the reservoir is at a pore pressure, and we're producing it. So the, the change, you know, if it's at... 80 megapascals, and we begin to produce it over time, it's going to go to 70, right, and 50, and 40, right? And so the change will always be negative. So uh, because we're talking about or interested in depletion during production, we're going to take the negative, um, you know, that would be on the left-hand side and, and move it to the right, and that's what causes this to change sign on the numerator, okay? So I just wanted to point that out, it's, it's a subtlety. Um, and so then, you know, then you can get a relationship between, you know, by just, uh, you know, taking the continuous derivative and approximating with discrete changes, the change in horizontal stress, um, well, I guess I didn't really define horizontal stress, but it's clear from that equation that we derived you also made the assumption that the two horizontal stresses are equal. So you can just say, call them stress horizontal. Right? So a change in horizontal stress is um, this constant times the change in the pore pressure. The, the alpha is BO's coefficient. And then it's just Poisson ratio. So if we you know, plug in some reasonable values, like you know, a quarter for the Poisson ratio and, and BO coefficient near one, then you, you can see that you know you get what's on the order of magnitude uh, two thirds. You know, for every uh, increment of pore pressure change, uh, that represents uh, two thirds times that is a change in the horizontal stress. Okay, so this kind of give you an estimate. And. Uh, this, you know, I was really counting on my pen to work because I have to draw the lines here. <laughs> but um, so for given for given values of uh, Poisson ratio, 
Let's see if I can. You get these curves as functions of BO's coefficient. So the the, the change in uh, st stress with pressure, and so in Zoback's book he calls this delta S over delta P A um, the stress path. Okay, so it's really uh, you know it's it's the slope of that curve. So the stress path is a function of BO coefficient. You get all these lines, and so the black lines that I drew are what theory predicts, and these are observations uh, from different fields, okay? And so in those observations, they had to have estimated uh, the minimum horizontal stress in some way uh, with a, a mini frac or something like that. And then look at the change in pore pressure due to depletion over time, and you can see where, uh, sort of where they fall. So while it's an estimate, it seems reasonable, right? There's nothing, um, there's nothing really far outside the bounds. Uh, of course, these out here, a little bit, you know, to match this data, you'd have to have a pore pressure of say zero. I mean, a, 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 a um, for a BO coefficient of one, you'd have to have a Poisson ratio of zero, which is, you know, not rocks typically don't have Poisson ratios that low, right? It's typically in the point two range, you know, if you will. So in these cases, it's probably a good indication that the formations exhibit a lot of inelasticity. Um, and it turns out, I think, if you look at what those formations are, um, they're very chalky formations that are likely um, under, under the vertical stresses where these reservoirs were um, produced. Th they're very likely into some inelastic range. Okay.